Uh, sebenarnya kurang sihat tapi boleh <laughs> semalam ada keracunan makanan uh, silap makan Oh, semoga pas recovery ya bu. Uh. Oke, okay. amin amin. Uh, <laughs> bentar kita oh, tunggu masih. I'm fine, sehat, sehat uh, alhamdulillah. Fine. Sedikit. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> Thank. Uh, uh, ibu Perunisa joining us? Ya ibu. Bu Perunisa is she joining no, us? No, she's uh, she has a class. Today. Okay. All right. This morning. Okay. okay. So, uh, it's just me for this, okay. for today. Uh, okay. Okay. Good. On Monday, I can because I, uh, be a moderator to in other event. Okay. Okay. So on Monday, I'll be having Ibu Karunisa again. Uh, on twenty twenty two. Yeah. Twenty first. Twenty first. Twenty first. Okay. Twenty first. Yeah. Good morning. On uh, Monday. Ah, uh, Monday nineteen twentieth. Twenty. Twenty two zero. Twenty. Uh, wait. Ah, uh, check on, the schedule. Let me check. Okay. The schedule. On twenty first. Twenty first is on. Yes. Uh, yeah. On Tuesday. Yeah. Yep, yeah, on Tuesday. Next on Tuesday. Tuesday. Yes, on Tuesday, okay. uh, inshallah, I'll will be your moderator because Miss okay. Runisa is uh, going to East Java. Uh, oh, no. East Java. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, so uh, uh, let me, uh, adik-adik mahasiswa, uh, uh, boleh di, apa, di, on kameranya biar bisa kita mulai hmm. ini mahasiswa um, yang sama hari isini hari itu kan yang sama tidak ya? ber berbeda oh, berbeda, berbeda okay. iya karena mereka kelas ada kelas Hari ini pagi ini mereka ada kelas. Oke, okay. alright. Kelas berbeda sebentar ya ibu. Um, Komting kelasnya. Ya, siapa ya? Biar. Kompetennya siapa? Biar. Uh, Kompeten untuk... Ini bukan... Se... Ini semua bukan satu kelas, Bu. Kalau kami ya, dari kelas... Dua, dua kelas, kan? Iya, Bu. Nah, nanti di, coba diinfokan di kelas... Givo uh, makan jalan di akhir uh, perkuliahan... Dan uh, screenshot dari Zoom meeting ini. Seperti perkuliahan biasa ya. Uh, baik. Uh, boleh di on-cam biar bisa kita mulai. Baik, Ibu Dr. Nur Azrina akan saya mulai. Ya, Ibu. Assalamualaikum yeah. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests, and our beloved student, uh, faculty member. So it is with it is with great pleasure that we gather here today on warmly welcome to esteemed guests from Faculty of Law, University Technology Mara Sah Alam, Selangor, Malaysia. Uh, Ibu Dr. Nor Azlina binti Abdul Aziz. We, who will shed light on the constitutional approach to judicial review in Malaysia and Indonesia. So, uh, Progress. I will share your CV first. Is it okay? Uh, if okay. You... Yeah, okay, okay, sure. Please proceed.
So our speaker today is uh, Ibu Dr. Nur Azlina binti Abdul Aziz. She's from University Technology Mara, Sah Alam Selangor, Malaysia. So this is a uh, academic qualification. It's uh, the PhD in law, International Islamic Stud Stud University PhD uh, with the title of thesis, the need of legal and administrative framework governing the the halal pharmaceutical industry in Malaysia. So expertise area is constitutional law, consumer law, law of contract, halal related law, medical, medical legal and women and child laws. Uh, so this is a working and teaching experience. Uh, there's a lot, yeah, Ibu. Uh, maybe it's okay. We, uh, if some of you want to read uh, the CV with this uh, super uh, experiment, experience, sorry, experience, uh, you can have it from me. Okay. Uh, so uh, today, uh, the presentation today topic is the constitutional law approach to judicial review in Malaysia and okay. in Indonesia. Okay. All right. So, uh, so uh, I will. Okay, you share your own. Yeah, I, I share my own screen. Slide. Okay. Uh, slide. okay. Please, uh, the class is your Miss uh, Ibu Nur, Dr. Nur Azlina. Okay, okay. Thank you very much, uh, Bu Leslie, uh, for the brief introductions. A very warm welcome. Uh, and then, hello, everyone. Uh, hopefully that you, ha you are in your best of health. So, uh, this is my second lecture for uh, USU student, Universitas Sumatra Utara. Um, and today I'm going to share on the constitutional approach on judicial review in Malaysia and Indonesia. Uh, this is actually a topic where I've received a um, matching grant. Uh, and I'm conducting a research between me and my fellow researcher from the Universitas of Ailanga uh, in Surabaya and uh, focusing on the constitutional approach on judicial review. Am I audible? My 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 is it clear? Yes, you will. Ah, okay, yes. thank you. So I'm going to start. Um, okay, the contents of this lecture, I'm going to uh, basically share with you the overview of the Malaysia and Indonesia uh, under the constitutional framework. And under the constitutional framework, it will determine how our judiciary functions. Uh, looking into the constitutional framework of the Malaysian government and Indonesia, then there will be slight differences between what is in Malaysia and what is in Indonesia. And then we'll further down to the court system. And then the role of the judiciary under the constitution, a brief introduction to that. And finally, we're going to discuss on judicial review. And among the things that we are going to, uh, to discuss is uh, the meaning, the differences, uh, the appeal and what are the differences between judicial review and also appeals and some of the limitations. Right. All right. Uh, the fundamental concept of Malaysia. Malaysia itself is known as a country with these two systems. So the two systems says that Malaysia holds up parliamentary democracy and featuring the constitutional monarchy. I think this is the first differences between Malaysia and uh, Indonesia. Number one is parliamentary democracy. Both Malaysia and Indonesia, we practice democracy. But the way we practice democracy, there is a slight difference between the parliament and also um, on, on in, in Indonesia, you have uh, two houses. You do elections for your president and also for your uh, DPR. Eh? PR is your uh, parliament. So we have two. But um, in comparison between Malaysia and Indonesia, Indonesia do not have a monarchy system. right? In Malaysia, we have monarchy system. 
the monarchy system plays a very important role in the constitution in terms of the administrations of Malaysia. Uh, and uh, by the term constitutional monarchy, meaning that our monarch, the power is very limited by the constitution. So most of the time, our monarchy acts on advice. And the person who usually gives advice is the prime minister. Like in Indonesia, okay, you have uh, the presidential democracy. So you have a president where you elect your president through election or pemilu. Uh, and you also elect uh, people who sit in the House of Representatives. Right? Uh, and in comparison to Malaysia, uh, Indonesia applies and adopts a clear distinction between um, the judiciary, the legislative and the executive, uh, also known by the doctrine of separations of power. Right? In Malaysia, our parliament consists of those people who have been elected and sit in the legislative during parliament session and outside parliament se session, they are also person who sits in the cabinet. So some of our parliamentarians or the one who sits in the legislative is also our executive. So um, there is overlapping of functions in certain cases. But in Indonesia, there is a clear distinction between the legislative, uh, the legislative, the judiciary, and also um, the executive. Executive consisting of your president, number one, right? So in that sense, we'll be looking into when the judiciary exercises the function, the most important thing is the independence of our judiciary. Why? Because the independence of the judiciary may uphold the rule of law. So when we have law, supposedly everyone can be controlled by the law. So if it is separated between the um, judiciary, the legislative and the executive, they can check the exercise of power by each of the branch. But if they are consisting of the same branch, for example, at Malaysia, the one who sits in the executive, some of them is also in the parliament. So that means sometimes there will be lack check and balance. Right, the role of the judiciary. Let's look in the role of judiciary. And this role of judiciary is similar between Malaysia and also Indonesia. Number one is adjudicatory role. I think this is the common role of our uh, judges. What is adjudicatory role? Adjudicatory role is when our judges have two parties before him in the court. So he proposes a trial. So that is adjudicatory role. Um, the court adjudicate the claims made by um, under the civil, uh, civil cases or uh, the criminal cases, so the pidana or the pidata cases, yeah, All right. And then other adjudicatory role, um, the court also exercise the penal functions. What is penal functions? Penal functions is the role that is given to court to punish, to sentence the people. And because we have our constitution, similar provision in Malaysia, our constitution and the Indonesian constitution, Undang Undang Dasar 1945, nobody can inflict any harm to our life. So rights of life is something which is stated under the Malaysian constitution and also the Indonesian constitution. Both of our constitutions are that. So by virtue of this rights to life, nobody can simply take off our life. But the court is very special. The judiciary is very special. They are given that function, uh, precisely the penal functions. So they can impose imprisonment on us, send us to prison if we have committed some, some wrongs or offences under the criminal law. Uh, and they are not violating the federal constitution by doing that because the judiciary have that functions. Right? Number three is enforcing constitutional supremacy. Both Malaysia and Indonesia, we apply the concept of constitutional supremacy. So our constitution is the highest law in the land. Whatever contravenes our constitutions can be declared as ultra virus or invalid. So for that purpose, this is where we'll be discussing judicial review the most, enforcing the constitutional supremacy. Right, next, 
this is something different between Malaysia and Indonesia. Judicial review in administrative law. So Malaysia's court, it practices judicial review on a clear matter to invalidate the act of the administrator. So our administrator, those who are given um, power, power uh, called as quasi-judicial power or quasi-legislative power, and their power, exercise of power, if they exceed the power given to them, then the court can invalidate. And this process is also known as the judicial review over the administrative actions. But in Indonesia, there is no clear judicial review over administrative actions. It falls under one of the um, role of the judges uh, in Indonesia, but it's not specifically under the administrative actions. Right, and then we have safeguarding human rights. Human rights is something which have been stated in our constitution. So both Malaysia and Indonesia uphold the United Nations human rights. All right, and then last is interpretations of laws. And the last part, the interpreting of laws is different between Malaysia and Indonesia. Why? Because Indonesia does not apply judicial precedent as one of the sources of law. As for Malaysia, the decisions of court becomes the law. So our superior courts consisting of the federal court or court of appeal or high court, decisions made by them is something that can turn to be laws. So this is what called as judicial precedent. But for Indonesia, um, the cases of court, decisions made by judges, is not something binding upon the future court. So it does not apply a judicial precedent as one of the sources of law. So therefore, the judges is merely um, upholding the content of law rather than enforcing what have been decided by the earlier court. Right now, we are moving to judicial review. The importance of the judiciary is number one. In a democratic country, the importance of judges is to check on the exercise of power by the other two branches, mainly the legislative and also the executive. So in cases whereby the executive and the legislative exceeds their power, and this exceeds of power violates the rights of the people, then the judges need to come in to uphold justice on behalf of the people. And in upholding justice, the important part of the judiciary is that they have to be independent. They cannot be influenced by the executive or the government. The government cannot give instructions to the judges to uphold certain, certain decisions. The decisions made by judges need to be fair and there has to be justice. Right, So that's the main role of the judiciary. So that this is where the judicial review shall come in. For example, I've mentioned there uh, the rule of law. So the rule of law, the principle states that nobody shall be above the law. So if the law says that during COVID-19, for example, everyone has to be in home due to the movement control order. So if there's any person who encroaches into these instructions. That means uh, they leave the home. Uh, so they violate the movement control order. And as a result, they spread COVID-19 to other people. So this is the case uh, whereby if the one who commits the wrongdoing is someone who has uh, positions, uh, VVIPs, or a person who has power in the country, they shall not be excluded from any punishment. This is one of the examples of rule of law. So if the normal people, ordinary people are punished with the sentence for breaching movement control order, similarly, the one who have powers, the one who are very wealthy or rich people, they should be subjected to the same punishment as well. So this is the main content of the rule of law. And, and this is where the judges comes in to uphold the rule of law. Okay, am I going too fast? Um, are you able to follow? Okay, yeah? All right. You can, you can ask questions if you have questions, yeah? If I'm going too fast, please stop me. <laughs> 
All right, so general understanding, judicial review. All right, um, I'm not going to read the slide, but I'm going to explain in summary what is judicial review. But judicial review is different from appeal. I believe that all of you have heard the word appeal. So sometimes if decisions made by the lower court uh, does not give satisfaction to any parties, what they can do is to appeal. So during the appeal cases, the court can look back into the facts of the case and can also um, modify the decisions, modify or alter the decisions. But in judicial review, the role of court, they cannot look back into the facts of the case. What the court can do is to declare whether that action is valid or it's not valid. So that's the main differences between judicial review and appeal. Appeal can change the decisions. For example, if the earlier court imposes an order to pay monetary compensations of USD 10,000 ringgit, for example, there. Upon appeal, if the court decides that uh, USD 10,000 uh, is too much, it's too expensive, so what the court can do is to reduce the amount, USD 5,000, for example. But under judicial review, that cannot be done. The changes of the decisions cannot be done. So what the court can do in judicial review is to give some orders. So orders just to declare whether the action is valid or the law is valid. Uh, what part of the law is invalid and it cannot be enforced. Right. So this is the summary of judicial review. Right. Uh, for Malaysia. Judicial review is done on legislative activities. So the legislative, when they um when they pass certain certain laws, and the laws is contradict the constitution. This is where judicial review can overturn or declare that the law is invalid or ultra virus. And the second part of judicial review, uh, is made on administrative activities. Administrative activities is we have our executive right like the government most of them and they are given uh, powers uh, their powers is what known as quasi judicial power and quasi legislative power quasi means half they are not judges but they are partially judged they can they can exercise functions of judges so therefore if they exceed the power in exercising uh, the judiciary power this is where the judge will come in and overturn decisions made by them. I'll be discussing some of the cases so that you will understand better. All right, so these are the, the explanation, further explanation. You can read this one, but this is what I've mentioned just now. It can be divided into two. Uh, so the judicial um, legislative action and administrative actions. All right, in Malaysia, a brief introduction to Malaysia, we have two types of uh, hierarchy, right? We have the civil courts and also the Sharia court. In Indonesia, you have religious court, but religious court uh, is only confined to uh, handling cases of Muslims, matrimonial um, and matrimonial and family matters of the Muslims. Yeah, in Indonesia, but in Malaysia, Sharia court plays a quite important role because it has two system. And inside the Sharia court. We also have our own sources of law that the court used. As for judicial review, the Sharia court do not have power for judicial review. The court that have power to review cases is the civil courts only. So Sharia court decision can be reviewed, but not by Sharia court. Uh, any review of the matter decided in the Sharia court must be bring upon to our highest law, uh, which is uh, the highest court, which is the federal court. Right? So the power of judicial review uh, is only given to our civil court, not the Sharia court, under these following laws. Yeah? Court of Judicature Act 1964 and Rules of Court 2012 and Interpretations Act 1948. Uh, this is stated under the federal constitutions. All right, these are the specific provisions, Order 53 and Order to uh, Section 25, right, on the law that I've mentioned just now. So this is the source of power 
that gives the court a uh, power to review. All right. Now let's move on to how do the court exercise judicial review on legislative actions. All right. The supremacy of the constitution uh, under Article Four One. This is something similar between Malaysia and Indonesia. Both countries uphold constitution as the supreme law of the land. Why? Because our constitution is a written constitution. Unlike United Kingdom, unlike um, uh, Norway, I think, another country, they have unwritten constitution. So when a country has an, an unwritten constitution, then the one that is supreme is their parliament not the constitution. So as for Malaysia and Indonesia, our constitution is supreme. So under Article 4.1, it states that any law that go against the constitution shall be declared to be invalid or ultra-virus, right? And then Article 1.28 further confers the power to the judges to review any law which is inconsistent with our constitution following the rule of the constitutional supremacy, right? And these are, when, when we discuss on how can a law uh, breach the constitution, uh, that means the lawmaker, they should have referred to the constitution because under our constitution, we divide the power to make law between the federal government, the state government, and the concurrent list. So, in terms of making law, our leg legislative body have to follow this list. For example, recently we have a case whereby um, the Sharia enactment, Sharia enactment in Malaysia, if you can refer to the state list, number two, Islamic law is part under uh, the state, right? So that means the one who can enact the law as to Islamic matter is only our state government, not the federal government, right? So our state government has enacted a law known as Sharia criminal enactment. So Sharia criminal enactment, among the offenses under this law is sodomy. Sodomy is an offense under the Sharia uh, enactment law, right? Uh, and at the same time, if you can refer to our federal list, okay, we have, um, you see at the internal security. So internal security, this is inclusive of um, penal code, our criminal laws. Kalau criminal di Indonesia is pidana, ya? Pidana or pidata? Pidana, I think pidana. All right. Um. So our under our criminal law, sodomy is also an offence. So recently they challenged the enactment of Sharia, uh, in state, stating that they should not penalise sodomy. Why? Because sodomy falls under administrations of justice, which falls under the federal list and not the state list. So therefore, when the state government legislator has enacted a law on sodomy, they has contravened the constitutions. Yeah. So federal powers, uh, in, in, in some flexibility, sometimes during emergency, if we declare emergency in our country, then this is the only ground whereby the federal may regulate something uh, that is supposedly falls under the administrations of the state, right? But only during emergency. Of emergency period, our federal government is not allowed to regulate anything under the state list. Right, this is the one that I mentioned on the quasi-legislative and quasi-judiciary. Okay, uh, if, if you do not understand quasi-legislative, meaning that uh, we have our administrator who is the executive. So the administrator, when they want to exercise their function, they have to have power. So the power given to them is not full power. They can be judiciary sometimes, but their power is limited. They are not a sole judge. They are not a sole judiciary. They are only quasi-judiciary. Quasi means half. So half judiciary meaning that 
when you want to impose your sentence, because imposing sentence, like I've mentioned in the functions of the judiciary, to impose uh, penal uh, functions and so on, that one is the role of the judges. So the executive do not have power, but we can delegate some judiciary power to the administrative, uh, administrative and this is termed as quasi-judiciary power. So similarly, quasi-legislative power, uh, quasi power means um, the administrator would have the power to pass laws. Originally, power to pass law is only on the legislative. Uh, but now we are um, distributing or delegating the power to the executive and we give them what is known as quasi-legislative power. So when they make law using quasi-legislative power, the law that they made is known as order or regulations or rules, right? And this delegated uh, legislations is monitored by the judges. So if they, it exceeds their power, then this is where the judicial, uh, judicial review will comes in. All right, these are some of the examples. Ikiputra is the case that I mentioned. This is the case of sodomy. So the case of sodomy, uh, the state in Selangor has imposed sentence on Ikiputra. Ikiputra commits sodomy. And then um, what was challenged in this case is that sodomy falls under the administrations of justice of the federal. So the law made by state is invalid. This is the claim made by um, the defense lawyer under Ikiputra. And the court agreed to that. So now Iki Putra sets a precedent, a new precedent stating that the state Sharia enactment is not valid by incorporating the offense of sodomy. Right, administrative action. Let us look. How can the judges review action of the administrator? Right, these are the two important principles under judicial review if the court wants to review decision made by the administrator. Right, they uh, they apply the concept of odi atram patam, or also known as right to be heard. And number two is nimo yudax in kausoswa. This one is doctrine against bias. What is this? Right, odi atram patam, stating that everybody before they can be sentenced, they need to be given the rights to be heard. So meaning that, uh, for example, if I am to be taken uh, on a disciplinary action for not um, attending my classes um, without a valid reasons, right? If they want to uh, suspend my work, they have to give sufficient notice. So that notice, at least I can prepare myself to defense. So this is known as the right to be heard or the atram pattern. And number two is I have the right okay. to defend or to present my case. That means if I were absent continuously from attending my classes, they should have given me the right to explain myself. Why did I do that? If they do not give me any time or any room for me to explain myself and they merely suspend my work, then this is where I can apply for judicial review. So I would be asking the judges to review decisions made by my superior. All right, number two, uh, the actions of the administrator is on Nemo Udax in Kausaswa. This is the rule that explains on the rights against bias. So the person who can sit as a panel to impose sentence on me cannot be a person that has conflict of interest with me. For example, all right, um, a person makes the complaint that I continuously absent from attending my classes. So it's a continuous absence from classes. It's a wrong under the uh, rules and regulations, right? So I have person A. So this person makes a complaint. At the end of it, one disciplinary committee will be set up to try my case. The person who makes the complaint cannot sit in my disciplinary committee. Why? Because that person would have 
a conflict of interest because he is the one who makes the report. So most probably he wants to suspend me. So if a trial of disciplinary committee were to be held against me, the one who makes the report should not be in the panel. So that's the rule of against bias. So if a person has been imposed on a sentence, for example, in my case, is the suspension of my work. The suspension is a sentence. So um, if it was done with bias, that means in the panel who decides my uh, I shall be suspended from my work, uh, then I can challenge the decisions to court to review decisions made by the disciplinary body. Uh, any questions so far? Okay, yeah. Stakat ni okay, yeah. Right. Uh, these are some of the rules, yeah. These are some of the rules where the court will be or have the power to review administrative actions. Number one, if um, the person uh, or the committee uh, that imposes sentence has an illegality issues. What is illegality issue? Are uh, using the wrong law. For example, um, using the law, uh, the offense is different, but um, under which I am sentenced, um, they use a different law, right? Uh, number two is irrationality. Irrationality is the proportions of a sentence, it's not appropriate, right? For example, I've only been absent for two days, but they terminate my contract. Okay, terminations of contract, meaning that I will be off job. I'm no longer having salaries. Uh, that's a harsh punishment. So for an offense of only two days of absence, that would be irrational. It would be un unrational. And this applies also as uh, under the, the principle of reasonableness and impropriety of procedures. All right. In Indonesia, in Indonesia since 2003, Indonesia has set up constitutional court. So under constitutional court, most of the cases for something which is inconsistent with the constitution is brought to the constitutional court. But at the same time, Indonesia also have Supreme Court and also uh, the religious court. Yeah. All right, let's look at the differences between constitutional court and Supreme Court in Indonesia. Right, since 2003, because Indonesia has already has a constitutional court, so matters of any uh, laws that is inconsistent with the constitution or we term it as unconstitutional laws, that is to fall under the jurisdiction of the constitutional court to review. And as for the competence to review legality of other law, this one belongs to the Supreme Court. Right, and this is stated under Article Twenty Four of Undang Undang Dasar, uh, and also another law, Law Number Twenty Three of Two Thousand Four of the Constitutional Court. Right, so this is the diagram of how I divide how judicial review is conducted in Indonesia. The Constitutional Court would have the power to review interpretations of the constitutions. Other than that, the impeachment of the president or the vice president, the electoral disputes that shall be handled by the constitutional court under judicial review, right? For the Supreme Court, it will have jurisdiction to review legality of the other laws, right? These are the scope of power under judicial review, the interpretation, the impeachment of the president and the vice president of Indonesia, and also the dissolutions of political parties. I would like to add Another one on the disputes of elections yeah? that shall be tried in the Constitutional Court. All right, uh, I'm at the end of the uh, lecture. Will that be okay? Bu Leslie? <laughs> Can I just conclude now? Yeah. And then we'll open for questions and answers. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So basically, uh, again, how I summarize, I conclude the lecture is that um, being a democracy, democratic country is both Malaysia and Indonesia. So uh, having judiciary and independence judiciary is the utmost important criteria. Without the, uh, without the judiciary, democracy would definitely be violated. Number two is that 
although we have judiciary, but if the judiciary is not independent, again, there is no meaning to the rule of law. So for that, judicial review is one of the way to uphold the rule of law and also to uphold democracies. Uh, I think uh, I'll end the, the lecture there. If you have any questions, so we open for questions and answer, yeah? Silakan, uh, adik-adik mahasiswa, jika ada pertanyaan tentang perbandingan konstitusi di Malaysia dan Indonesia. Ini jurusan apa ya? Khususnya apa? Rata-rata Julian atau Felicia? Julian Pal Julian Ibu do you hear my voice Ibu? Ya Bu. Kamu jurusan apa? Rata-rata jurusan apa? Saya pernah tuh. Felicia Perdata, Bu. Rata-rata perdata, ya? Ya, silakan jika ada pertanyaan tentang yang baru disampaikan tentang komparatif konstitusional antara Indonesia dengan Malaysia. Subjek konstitusi ini agak berat ya Bu. <laughs> kalau mahasiswa saya juga, kalau minta ditanya, dia agak lama mau mikir apa soalan yang sesuai. <laughs> yang konsep, ya. konsepnya harus dipahami dulu kan? Iya. Uh, ya. uh, mungkin hanya ke perbandingan bisa jadi, karena mereka ini juga mata kuliah hukum lingkungan itu umum, bisa juga hmm. ke green konstitusi, uh, konstitusional, uh, green konstitusional penerapan Bagaimana di Malaysia dan di Indonesia ya Ibu uh, untuk perbandingan yeah. untuk penerapan sama seperti kita uh, melakukan uh, penelitian lalu dengan UITM yeah. itu tentang hal tourism itu kalau okay. di Malaysia sudah uh, sudah rigid artinya sudah ada peraturan yang secara khusus mulai sampai ke training ya Ibu tapi kalau di Indonesia uh, Cuma ada beberapa peraturan uh, daerah, bukan undang-undang. Ah, iya, uh, iya. Belum yang wisata, wisata halal. Hmm. Jadi bisa sebenarnya untuk uh, uh, ide untuk uh, skripsi, untuk apalagi kemarin kita ada masalah tentang, bukan ada masalah, ada kasus putusan konstitusional tentang pemilu. Iya, oke, okay, oke, okay, iya. Yeah. Yang umur batas umur 40 tahun. Iya, yeah, betul. Kalau Kemudian di Malay, di, ya. Kalau yang di tahun 2014 itu ada juga keputusan uh, ini ya, Pak Joko. Uh, yang ada yang um, mencabar, uh, tetapi yeah. ya di di NW diputuskan um, tidak ada apa-apa salah lakulah dalam pemilu itu. Pak Dewan di 2014. Uh, yeah. 2014. Ya, yeah. uh, banyak hal-hal <laughs> seperti itu di Indonesia yang baru saja uh, terjadi. Uh, Ketua Mahkamah Konstitusi diberhentikan uh, karena dianggap memberi keputusan yang berdasarkan kepentingan dan memiliki relasi dengan yang berkepentingan. Nah, itu yang kalau, itu kalau yang 40 tahun ya? Yang iya, berapa? yang 40 tahun. Karena yang hmm. uh, calon pres, bakal calon presiden adalah uh, sepupu, eh sepupu, keponakan. Keponakan ketua ah. Mahkamah Konstitusi. Oke, okay, itu sudah ada konflik, konflik of interest. Yes, konflik on the... of interest. Uh, so, jadi putus uh, bukan keputusannya yang dibatalkan, tapi Ketuanya itu 
dengan Dewan uh, Kehormatannya diberhentikan secara tidak hormat sebagai hakim, hmm. bukan sebagai anggota Mahkamah Konstitusi. Oh, oke, Kalau okay. sebagai hakim. Nah, dan untuk gugatan yang sudah diputus, untuk putusan yang sebelumnya untuk 40 tahun, harus diajukan gugatan baru lagi. Tidak, tidak uh, not automatically uh, dibatalkan. Hmm. Ya, ya. Gitu. Kalau, Kalau di Malaysia di... itu sama. Di Malaysia itu sama. Kalau uh, misalnya pelantikan, contoh ya, uh, Perdana Menteri sekarang, Anwar Ibrahim, yang ke-10, uh, ketika dia dipecat tahun 1999, Uh, hakim yang mendengar kesnya itu ada konflik of interest. Uh, jadi ia dicabar, uh, minta ditukar harking. Kerana hmm. apa? Kerana ketika dia menjadi timbalan perdana menteri, dia biasa menjadi um, disciplinary board untuk hakim yang mendengar kes dia sekarang. Jadi dia kata kemungkinan bias itu sangat tinggi. Sebab ketika yeah. dia yeah. jadi perdana menteri dulu dia pernah menjatuhkan hukum kepada hakim tersebut. Oh, ah, oke, okay. begitu ya. Seharusnya pada saat proses itu diajukan peng, penggantian hakim, ya Bu. Uh, bukan betul, pada betul. Saat setelah itu kemudian dihukum, itu untuk menghindari konflik of interest tadi. Iya, betul, betul. Jadi, uh, justru sangat, this is very interesting uh, to all of the student. Uh, banyak pertanyaan yang bisa di, diajukan. Kalau uh, dari tadi mengikuti nih jalannya perkuliahan ya Yohana Angelika. Yohana? Di dalam kelas saya semester lepas, uh, semester lepas ada empat orang pelajar dari uh, Universitas Sumatera Utara. Oh iya, iya, iya. Ada, ada yang ada dalam kelas ini? Uh, sudah sudah lewat kelas, seperti sudah semester oh, 6 ya. Oke, okay, oke. Okay. Because on, on Monday ada seorang Jaslin. Oh uh, ya, yeah. ya. Yeah. Yang ini sepertinya sudah saya I forgot <laughs> namanya saya ada uh, mereka presentasi hasil perkuliahan di UITM ibu. Iya. Yeah. Kepada kita ada uh, ada Jaslin ada, ada Gabi, Natian uh, Natania. Kalau oh, ada yeah. di dalam ini, tapi tidak ada dengan si seorang lagi Shanas. Pun tiada. Ya. Rasanya udah udah nih ya, udah atas lagi kuliahnya ya. Ya, ya. ya okay. uh, dan mereka pun uh, mengatakan sedikit kesulitan memahami uh, konstitusi di uh, apa mata kuliah. Ya. Yeah. Uh, Perbedaan. <laughs> ya, yeah. karena di sini berbeda sistemnya dengan di Malaysia. Ya. Yeah. Itu. Tapi yeah. tak apa kalau ini dimajukan aja soalannya ke email pun boleh. Ya, Nanti saya ya. Oke, okay. uh, boleh uh, adik-adik mahasiswa ada yang mau ditanyakan nanti hasil perkuliahan karena akan di uh, ada tugasnya uh, dari dosen mata kuliah okay. kelas ini. Jadi silahkan dan ada pertanyaan. Kemudian untuk daftar hadir G formnya sudah saya semat sudah saya uh, kirimkan di chat boleh ke boleh di diakses kemudian kalau ada pertanyaan boleh nanti saya share email ibu Dr Nur Azlina Audi yeah. Audi Matondang Uh, so this is my student atau okay. Pierre uh, do you have any question Pierre about uh, constitution in Malaysia uh, so far uh, belum ada bu. belum ada <laughs> so far so good ya yeah. oke okay. yes, okay. atau, atau mau saya yang tanya boleh <laughs> nanti <laughs> nangis uh, <laughs> gak usah gak usah <laughs> Baik, uh, Ibu mungkin nanti via email masih banyak yang harus ya, boleh, boleh. karena Indonesia di email. Uh, ya, hukum in, uh, konstitusional di Indonesia kayak hat, uh, hukum tata negara di uh, hukum tata negara. Uh, fakultas hukum sendiri itu peminatnya agak 
kurang ya <laughs> sedikit paham, dibandingkan paham. perdata pidana nah itu sangat banyak uh, mungkin karena itu pemahamannya uh, harus lebih tinggi lagi untuk uh, konstitusional Oke, that's why tidak maybe apa-apa. <laughs> you just little for the the matter in English so they have maybe Oh, oke. Okay. four or six times to understand Oke, okay. <laughs> to understand. Oke, okay, I'm so sorry. But 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 it's okay oh, it's on okay the it's okay it's okay because it's a uh, internationalization uh, Iya. in Universitas Sumatera Utara untuk Oke, membiasakan oke. it's okay ibu uh, terima kasih thank you very Oke. much All right. for today Thank you so much and also. Yeah. yeah uh we will see you at uh 21st november Yep. at at uh i forgot Morning. I think morning. morning Uh, it's morning yep. soon Morning. okay Soon. Yep. okay Okay. okay So thank see you you again. very thank you Insyaallah. very much yeah ibu Okay. Assalamualaikum selamat all. Waalaikumsalam. selamat pagi adik-adik uh, terima kasih Uh, silakan diisi jangan lupa G formnya Oke, okay, saya leave dulu ya. ya assalamualaikum Oke, okay. warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam.